The 2024 Brownlow medal has come to an end and Patrick Cripps takes out his second Chaz Brownlow. Wow, what an unbelievably dominant Brownlow performance. I can't get over how many votes the top five, and particularly the top two got. The top two both broke the record for the most Brownlow votes ever. I believe it was 36, and I think, was that Ollie Wines back in 21? We'll put a pin in that, because it's kind of getting odd how many votes the top contenders are getting, but a very deserving Brownlow medal for Patrick Cripps. I've been a long time admirer of him from back in the day when, you know, I remember researching the 2013 draft before it happened. And as I was looking at stuff at Curtin University in the lab, I looked up and saw Patrick Cripps go and sit down quite close to me and look at afl.com.au articles about the draft. But he seems like an absolute champion and, um, you know, had to go through his battles. He's been fiercely loyal to that Carlton footy club. He's been through some tough times and, um, you know, with his body, he's always been one of those players who had so much potential. But his body kept failing him for a little while there. It stopped him from really reaching elite status for a while. But that has not been the case over the last handful of seasons. And 22 wins the brown low. Now he's got two. That puts him in some elite company. Lockie Neal won two, obviously. Um, Fife has won two. Judd Ablett Goods. Those are the recent examples I can think of off the top of my mind. So an amazing achievement. And well done to Nick Dagos as well, who also would have won the Brownlow in pretty much any other season. Also want to shout out the Goal of the Year and the Mark of the Year awards. Um, I didn't put this online, but those were my two favorite. Obviously, Harley Reid bias. I still remember how I felt when that goal went through. It was adrenaline. You know, to be honest, I wasn't watching the game. I was overseas and I was in a taxi in Athens, paying through the nose through data to look at Instagram to see Harley Reid's goal. And I, I remember opening it, not knowing it was going to be a goal. And I remember the feeling and the crowd roar through my phone, looking at Instagram, which is such a lame way to consume it but still feeling so immensely excited when that happened. I think he deserved goal of the year. And I also thought Bobby Hills was the best mark of them all. So congratulations to those winners as well. But let's just digest the top five. So I did my predictions. Uh, you would have seen that earlier today. Um, not to be taken too seriously because A, the Brownlow is hard to um, predict anyway. It's so subjective for a start. You can't predict what other people think. But also, you know, I don't pay attention enough to really be too aggrieved by it. But I definitely got a few wrong here and there's a few surprises here we want to go through. So Cripps winning, I think I had him third. I look so dumb now. Uh, I tried to shake it up a little bit, but I had Lockie Neal second. He didn't get anywhere near it. Where is Lockie Neal? He is down here with 22 votes, which to be fair is still a pretty good season of vote getting. Dacos was my predicted winner. Zach Butters did better than I expected with 29. Sarong cracked the top five. And of course, Isaac Heaney, look at these votes here in the first half of the season. Fantastic. Tom Green, Chad Warner. Those were a couple of others that surprised me. Where did Chad Warner end up? 23 votes. Um, pretty good going. I, I did tip Goulden to have more votes. But at this point here, when Chad Warner's on, I don't know, he got to 19 or 21 pretty quick. I thought, geez, uh, that is looking like a terrible prediction by me. In fact, what was uh, Goulden on? He was on nine votes at the same point. He was 12 votes behind, and that second half of the year really kicked on. Um, Bontempelli down here as well with 19 votes. Adam Trelaw stealing votes in a massive way. I mean, congrats to Trelaw. He had a fantastic season and deserves to get rewarded with votes. But I can't help but feel that Bontempelli and Neil, a little bit undervoted to be honest if you'd have told me that Newcomb was going to get more votes than Lockie Neal and Bontempelli uh, and even Brayshaw the same as Neal I would have been very very surprised but nonetheless this is the way it's panned out and uh, let's go club by club as I think I remember who I predicted for everything Jordan Dawson getting the most votes for the Crows was pretty obvious I think uh, so no big surprises there Lockie Neal um, over Hugh McCluggage. McCluggage has looked really good in the finals, and I, I reckon there's a chance he becomes finals player of the year, but Lockie Neal uh, was always going to be that. Carlton, we can, well, we can almost skip it. Walsh had 16, that's not bad, considering, well, he only played after round five, didn't he? Dacos, there was no one even close to him at Collingwood, 38 votes. Look at that consistent vote getting. So from round eight onwards, he polled in every game except one. That is absolutely absurd. What? Did, uh, how does Cripps compare to that? Not quite as, uh, well, you don't want to say he's not as consistent, but you know what I mean. Uh, didn't poll in absolutely every game, but a lot of three vote performances there, including six to end the year. I do think he was clearly going to get three against West Coast, but I didn't really have any idea off memory past that. Essendon, Zach Merritt probably didn't poll as well as I expected. I probably expected a bigger gap between here and Nick Martin, but Nick Martin did have a fantastic start to the year. And I do remember here, Zach Merritt, this form here, I think, uh, was it West Coast in round eight, I want to say? He had 30 and kick three, and I think that was when people started talking him up as a Brownlow choice. And 
to be fair, he polled four in a row, three vote games, and then after that was a little bit quiet. Caleb Sarong over Brayshaw and Young. I think that that order makes sense. Uh, Hayden Young, I probably expected a little bit better than that, but Caleb Sarong also polled really well. Um, all Australian midfielder, not a big surprise, uh, but fantastic season. Jeremy Cameron over Tom Stewart and Max Holmes. So I thought Max Holmes and Jer- uh, would be the biggest threat here for Jeremy Cameron getting the most votes. Um, so that surprised me. Tom Stewart bobbed up for a few three-vote games. That makes sense. But Jez Cameron was also my prediction. Gold Coast Suns, Matthew Rao polled better than I expected. I did say that he would be Gold Coast's most, uh, or biggest vote getter. Um, but I thought it would be closer between he and Anderson for sure. Tom Green over Jesse Hogan. That's true. I mean, Jesse Hogan, wow, there's a lot of votes at the back end of the year. Coleman medalists. Coleman medalists usually get votes, uh, but never enough to really get close to winning since Tony Lockett probably. Newcomb did have a great season, 24 votes uh, over James Warple. I think that one was fairly safe, although, like I said, Newcomb probably got closer to, well, you finished in the top 10, I believe. So he got closer to winning than I expected. Petrarca still polled more than Gorn. So this is one prediction I got wrong. I thought Gorn would have him for votes, but you look at that first half of the season, and, you know, decent chance to have gone close, maybe. How many games is that left? Nine games. You know what? If my math is correct, he could have polled three votes in all nine games and still not won. <laughs> That's crazy. LDU gets the most votes over Harry Sheasel. I did actually think Sheasel was a fairly safe bet to get more than LDU, um, but well done. Look at LDU's performances there. Three three vote games in a row and then one gap and then another three vote game. That was probably where North Melbourne started really elevating. And you can make the case that LDU really is a barometer player for, uh, for North Melbourne. I think of the first two wins they had in 2023, LDU was unbelievable. So when he's firing, North Melbourne are a much better team, um, whereas Sheasel's a bit more consistent week in, week out. Zach Butters, wow, that's a really good end of the season. We did know he got rewarded with uh, All-Australian spot, but he got, I think he finished third in the end, didn't he? Jason Horn francis I feel like he's still got so much to go to improve. Um, but he's still polling 19 vote seasons. He could easily win the award one day. Shea Bolton and Taranto, again, probably not a big bombshell there. I think I predicted Taranto. Um, and wow, so <laughs> two of the top three might leave the club. Rowan Marshall, the most St Kilda, is hardly a shock here. Um, Jack Sinclair came second. I thought Steele might come second, but there you go. Rowan Marshall did have a pretty good year. How star-studded is this? Heaney, Goulden, and Warner. So yeah, Goulden came from the clouds in the second half of the year to storm into second. Isaac Heaney, look at that start to the year. I think he was clearly ahead at round 10. I think he had 21 votes. And there you go, polled another seven in the second half of the year. So what could have been for Isaac Heaney? Again, we're talking about catching up 17 votes to the eventual winner. So maybe he was never a shot. Elliot Yo had the most. That was my prediction. Harley Reid got rewarded with one three-vote game against the Melbourne Footy Club. Um, only two in the Derby. That makes sense because Elliot Yo won the medal. And perhaps here's the biggest surprise with Trelaw outvoting Bontempelli. Not that he didn't have a great year. I just thought Bontempelli probably would have got more votes. But in the end, Trelaw had a fantastic year. So congrats to him. There you have it, guys. That was, uh, you know, maybe not the most enthralling Brownlow medal count, but still very memorable for the, the fact that 45 votes is now the record for winning the Brownlow medal. What is it exactly? Why, why are we seeing a league-wide trend where the best players are getting a bigger share of the votes? I suppose... To be fair, on the one hand, we're playing an extra game. And that doesn't really equate for it, does it? Um, we're seeing routinely the guys that are located right at the ball drop, right in front of the umpires, are getting all the votes, and it's to a greater extent than we've ever seen before. doesn't matter. Patrick Cripps is a very deserving winner. So congrats to him. Congrats to Carlton. It feels great when your, your player wins a Brownlow medal. So let me know what you thought in the comments, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.